seconds to do that while he's bringing me another thing so I put this on but uh, we give God praise for souls I don't know about you but it's a blessing when God fills somebody with the Holy Ghost Amen. Amen. it is such an awesome thing and I'm out here all the time but I never get used to it and I hope I don't because once you get used to what is going on then it's, it ceases to be God so this way he's always doing something different all the time. This, the awesomeness of him to make me know that he's God. Okay. Yeah. So today, don't worry, we're going to talk a little bit. Um, I want to teach today. I'm going to, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the pastor to come in so I can spread my nose out. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. 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 And get your questions together. But that's why I'm standing down here. Because I learned that when you stand in the pulpit, the congregation won't ask you questions. Okay? But if you stand down here, it, it makes a difference. I, I travel all the time. And it was last Saturday when I was in New York, the pastor said, You want to stand? I said, No, no, no. I have to stand down front. Otherwise, they won't ask. Oh, yes. I said, oh, Yeah, that one's okay. You can bring that one. Right. Yes. Yeah, so I can put this right here. This is so marvelous. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Thank you, man of God. Um, I, the pastor said to me last Saturday, you understand the poor pastor? No, no, no. No, I said, they won't ask questions if I stand in the pulpit. And I tell you, before it was open, everybody had the hand up asking questions. He said, I just can't believe it. I said, that's the way they operate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one, uh, <clears throat> when we talk about the Holy Ghost, there's 143 different functions when we deal with the Holy Ghost. Y'all looking like, what? Yes, 143 <laughs> different functions. There's 32 different subtopics listed under the one word, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me that a lot of times we only feel like it's just the Holy Ghost. No, it's so much more. Uh -huh. And once a person receives the Holy Ghost, you just stepped into the door. You have no idea how much more the Lord has for you once you receive it. And okay, now that you know it's 143 different functions, we're not going into them, 32 different subtopics, I'm going to deal with you and let you know how to work with souls at the altar. Okay, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to your receiving room. Once I'm at a church, you never have a tavern room. Mm. The word tarot means to wait. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a tarot room anymore, you have a receiving room. Mm -hmm. A receiving room is a place where people go to receive the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The word tarot means to wait, so if you got a tarot room, that means somebody's going in there to wait. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go wait, so you change the name of the room from tarot room to receiving room. <laughs> okay? Amen. Yeah, no more tarot. No more tarot. Right. They did that on the day of Pentecost. They waited in the upper room. Yeah. I told you last night. Now that Jesus has been to the cross and sent his spirit back, 
We no longer have to wait on it. We are now living at the Holy Ghost dispensation. That's right. So all we have to do now is to receive him, not wait on him. Thank you. It's so awesome. It is so awesome. Okay? And most people say, you mean it's that easy? Yes, it's just that easy. Mm -hmm. According to the scripture. Okay? Now, the scripture says in Hebrews 13 and 8, he said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. So he is the same and he hasn't changed, but we change. Mm -hmm. And you know what I tell people as I travel? It's a trick of the enemy that causes people to change. And some people are so stuck in tradition, they do not want to really go back to what the Word of God is saying. Right, right. It is amazing to me how we will hold on to tradition. Yeah. Hallelujah, loud and fast. And nowhere in your Holy Bible did you say hallelujah to receive the Holy Ghost. That's right. So when you take people to that, what you used to have as a tearing room, mm -hmm. I tell altar workers, you do not go in that room with your own private conversation. Amen. Amen. If you're going to the receiving room, you have to go in that room with the expectation that the candidate is going to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, I ask nobody where your receiving room is as I travel all over the country, never. The reason why, because I pray with the people right at the altar, yes. because what happened if you got folk in the audience that want the Holy Ghost and they see how quick they received it, then it gives them an incentive to come to the altar. Okay? But when we drag them to the receiving room, you lost them. Because mm. the folks in the congregation, they're already skeptics. Y'all know how it is. Mm -hmm. oh, what are they doing? You know, they don't even hear the Holy, they just hear ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they hear. So, and, you know, and so what they said, wow, where are they taking them? What are they doing? And the candidate, when they come to the altar, if you don't make sure that they go back and get their purse and get their little stuff and take it with them, you lost them. Mm -hmm. That spirit can be broken from the time that you take them from the congregation to the receiving room. That's true. You lose the trend of the spirit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So what you do, you pray with them at the altar whether they can be received the Holy Ghost. And, and another thing, one other thing, what happens when a person comes to the altar, they ready for the Holy Ghost, and we are so traditional stuff, we tell them about the baptism first. Mm -hmm. Don't Let's go with the Spirit. Right. That's why we need to ask God as altar workers to give us the discernment of spirits. That's right. So we have to discern the spirit. Then you can tell. You would know where that person is. Yeah. You know whether or not they are ready for the Holy Ghost at that moment. If they're ready at that moment, then, I mean, come on. Let them get the Holy Ghost first. Yeah. You're still in order according That's right. to Scripture. That's right. They can get the Holy Ghost first and then go to the water according to Scripture. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah, so he hasn't changed. <laughs> but, but some folk, the first thing they say, have you been baptized? Right. That person ready for the Holy Ghost, almost speaking in tongues, and you break the trend of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we take them to the receiving room. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with the receiving room, just right receiving room. Uh -huh. In the receiving room, I put family members out of the receiving room. <laughs> and the reason being, family members, they have good intentions, but they can be a hindrance. Right. Right. Because the candidate that's in there are conscious of the family member that's in there. Right. Okay, so what I do, I ask them, not, not a thin skin, so you gotta be careful. <laughs> Y'all know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they real thin skin, so you say to them, say, now listen, now, I know you would like to be in here, but you don't want to be a hindrance, and they are, uh, they are uh, concerned that you're in here. Okay, they know you want them to receive the Holy Ghost, so why don't you just sit right outside the door? I don't set up too far. Uh -huh. Go to get upset, okay? So <laughs> I want you to go right outside the door and just sit there and wait. And as soon as they receive the Holy Ghost, I'm going to come and get you, okay? So you tell the candidate, you let them know. Because I have people have came to the altar and they family members, and I ask them, please go back to your seat. Then after the fact, I'll explain to them, and they would say, yes, I, I could tell, I knew they could tell, because they could feel the person's spirit. Yeah. They know they're there. Yeah. So you just ask them, and in that receiving room, 
Will you just stay outside the door and pray? Don't go too far now. Just stay here and pray. Once they receive the Holy Ghost, I'm going to bring it back in. That's in the receiving room. All the workers in the receiving room, you do not have your private conversation. No private conversation. It had to be unity. It was unity on the day of Pentecost. It still had to be unity now. Altar workers, I'm checking my notes. Altar workers should always have the same time of the month that you set a day aside for fasting and praying. Not just on Wednesday, because we throw everything on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Private conversation. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. On your private conversation, when you go in there, and that candidate is sitting there, and you sitting there with your legs across that candidate saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, louder and fast than yours. Child, you know, I, my children is outside. I got to get home. <laughs> I got to go home and fix dinner. Right. All of that kind of stuff. Right. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you in there, you all are so unified, you're not talking about nothing but that soul. Matter of fact, you're encouraging that soul. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. This can take a second. Mm -hmm. When you walk them to the receiving room, if you have to take them, you say, why are you walking back here? You can start speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. This will only take a second. Because the Bible says the word is not even in your mouth. The Bible says, I do your belly shift from rivers of living water. And you, you learn the scriptures and quote them. Mm -hmm. Don't try to look in your Bible. And I'm going to show you. No, no, no. Just quote the scripture. Okay, you know private conversations. And if you go in the receiving room and you know that your family is outside waiting on you, you need to ask somebody else, can you pray with these folk today? Because your spirit and your family is out, is pulling you. Okay, they're pulling you because you're in there, but you know, I got to get outside, I got to go take care of my children. I got to do that because sometimes I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people would have saved husbands mm -hmm. if the women didn't stay at church after they praying with folk. All right, all right, come on. Y'all know how it used to Amen. be. Amen. It used to be a time that they stayed at the church until after 12 o'clock right. or midnight praying Amen. with folk. That's right. We don't have to do that. Amen. You don't have to do that. It was a quick break on the day of Pentecost. But you have to change your attitude right. towards it. Your thinking has to change. So you change your thinking and say, okay, it's going to take a second because the Bible says it happens how soon? Suddenly. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it happens suddenly, then it's still going to happen suddenly. So all you're doing basically is building a person's faith. People receive the Holy Ghost by faith, Amen. not by hallelujahs. We said a whole lot, and we said enough hallelujahs for our whole family tree to have, and we still didn't get it. <laughs> Some of us said hallelujah half of the night. Mm -hmm. I know they did me. They had me saying hallelujah from I was baptized like two o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. And they had it me until five. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, louder and faster. Okay. Louder and faster. And all of this other stuff. And it was amazing to me. It was so amazing. They kept telling me, he, he's right there, he's close to you. And let me tell you something, it was so awesome. I was, we were standing, I was standing on, the, it was a piano, they had the piano right on the, right like in the corner. Mm -hmm. And I was standing up, and I was, I could actually see, it's like I could see the Lord walking across. And I tried to jump across to catch him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember hitting my arm right on, right there. Wow, and they come, I catch him, I said, you know, he's right there, you know. And as opposed to telling me the words is in your mouth. They didn't mean any harm. Mm -hmm. But they did hallelujahs until 5 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. I left and went home, came back for Bible class. And they were so positive. See, I was a professional gambler in Vegas. My aunt knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what they did, they made sure that they was going to work me hard because, you know, we classify sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like if you're a professional gambler, you need it real bad. No, I need it because of the sin that Adam and Eve committed. Okay, I need it because I was born a rank sinner. Right. So I needed the Holy Ghost. Come on now. <laughs> so, so what they did that for Wednesday night, she had told the pastor about me and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, the pastor baptized me and the lady elder her see more. Okay, so that night I was there, Bible class. They cut the Bible class short. For me to receive the Holy Ghost. 
they worked me another two hours that night. Hallelujah, loud and faster. Hallelujah, loud and faster. Okay, okay. Long story short, didn't receive the Holy Ghost till the next night. Went to somebody's house, uh -huh. and I received it. But they still. Uh, let, let me let me tell you, let me tell you something. Thank you, Jesus. The thought that He's giving me now. Let me tell you this in case I forget it. You have to be so extremely careful what you say in front of the candidate. Right. When a person is seeking God for the Holy Ghost, they're not deaf. Right. They're not out in the left field. They know exactly what's going on. Right. When I was seeking God for the Holy Ghost that night, that Thursday night, okay, that was at the lady's house, and I had ate. All day I was trying to make sure that I, you know, was ready for the Holy Ghost, but I kept smoking all day long. But anyway, Lord, <laughs> I was a smoker, two and a half pack of cigarettes a day. Y'all cannot believe that, can you? But it did. It was true. But it's a God thing. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So listen, one of the ladies, the sister to the lady that owned the house, she said to my aunt and to her sister, listen, she said, I'm going home. She's not going to get it. I heard exactly what she said. Wow. The Lord had taught me some stuff. Be careful what you say around the candidate. They hear what you're saying. Right. They might be saying hallelujah, but they hear, they're not deaf. Right. Speak positive to the candidate. In the receiving room, speak positive to them at all times. Mm -hmm. So listen. Your spirit controls the atmosphere. Right. Listen to me. This is facts. You know what she did? She stayed there for a while, the whole time she was there. Now listen, her spirit is saying she's not going to get it. See, your spirit controls the atmosphere. Mm. You don't want to be a hindrance. So look at this, she kept saying, well, she's not going to get it. Mm. I'm going home. I heard every word of it. The woman got up and left. Before she got home, God had filled me with the Holy Ghost. Wow. Her spirit was a hindrance. Because she was expecting it not to happen. Uh -huh. So if you're in a receiving room and you expect it not to happen, leave, leave, yes, leave. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. If you're at the altar and you don't believe it's going to happen, just leave. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not hurting nobody but the candidate. Yeah. Okay, so excuse yourself. Right. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Come on now, you, you, your Amen. spirit controls the atmosphere. That's right. When that lady got home, before she got home, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. They called her when she got home. Could not believe it. She could not believe it. But I heard every word she said. So don't speak nothing but positive things around the candidate. Y'all got it? Positive. In the receiving room, positive. Okay? So you all, and listen, you all are so connected as altar workers at the altar and the receiving room. I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit how you're supposed to do it, how you're really supposed to work the altar. But when you all are in there, if he's in there and he's praying with the candidate, you in turn is praying for him. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do it in a minute. You in turn is praying for him. One, don't over talk the other. Okay? In the receiving room. Okay? And I'm going to question about the receiving room. The receiving room is just like a hospital. When a mother go in the hospital to have a baby, make it real simple. When that woman go in the hospital to have a baby, the doctor and the nurse, I don't care how upset they are with each other, once they in that room, there is unity. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Whatever that doctor asks for, the nurse is going to give it to him. Okay? She's not going to say that and, and hit her mother pushing trying to have the baby. She's not going to say, I'm upset with you, I'm not going to do it. It's unity. Come on, y'all. Right. I got two children. I'm so glad they want nobody in there fussing over me. <laughs> Cutting pains was quite good. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I love you. <laughs> so, so it's unity at all times. This is the key to people receiving the Holy Ghost. Our spirit has to be right. But it's so marvelous. It's so marvelous. Okay? And they're going to receive it because you're going to speak positive Amen. at all times. All right? Anybody else? Anybody got a question about the receiving room before I go in down to the baptismal room? I, I got a question. Yes, Pastor. I'm sorry, I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, and this may be all, but I mean, when you said something, it made me think, so hopefully I'm not outside the receiving room. But what about the candidate when you're really trying to build their faith up past their doubt? 
you know, like you saying, like the altar worker, you don't need to be in there if you don't think they're going to receive it. Uh, you know, sometimes a candidate, something I really wanted, yet they're doubting. Um, I'm sorry, that's taking you to different No, point. it's okay. But, it's really okay. But, I mean, how, when their candidate is doubting, when their candidate is doubting, I tell the candidate exactly what the scripture said. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of St. Luke, ask and it shall be given. Yes. All I do is explain to them what the scripture says. The Bible says you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the word is not the even in your mouth. Mm -hmm. The Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. All you have to do is ask him for it. Because the scripture didn't say work. The scripture says ask and it shall be given. Right. And that 13 verse, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So I build their faith through the scripture. I'm steady repeating the scripture. And you just keep repeating the scripture. Well, that's all you do. That's all I do. And they're going to receive it. I said, let your doubt go. If you notice last night, I was praying with somebody. I don't know who it was. I can pick up their spirit. It was really a doubt. And I, I lay my hand right here because I, I can pick up their spirit. Uh -huh. And I was asking them, release your doubt. Just release your doubt. Right. Release your doubt. I said, I'm going to lay hands on you. And I put my hand right here and said, release your doubt. And after a while, you can tell the doubt lift us. Okay. That's how connected you have to be with the candidate. Right. And folks said, oh, is that easy? This is hard work, you all. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand, this is hard work. But it's so marvelous when you see somebody get the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Okay? When you so can, I want you to pray. Ask God to give you the discerning spirits yes, so that you can pick up people. Right. And it's not to talk about it, but it's to be concerned about their soul. Amen, yeah. amen. God got so many people out here that want the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. So many. But we need to be in a position where we can reach them. Right. Oh, God. And, and they can tell when you are connected. They can tell when you connected. Yeah. Okay, you'd be surprised. You had your hand up, sir. Yes. Um, in the receiving room, how many people should be working with the individual? Because sometimes you get a crowd. You get a crowd of people. I like and, that. And it really doesn't, like you said, I, I noticed that yesterday you said uh, you had the first lady come up with you and stand beside you. You didn't ask for the ministers to come up and swarm the area, per se. It was more like, you know, I just need this bad. one individual. Bad. I love it in you, man. I love it. <laughs> that is so marvelous. Because we're so accustomed. That's right. That's we're true. so accustomed okay. to the whole church coming up and, and getting around them and screaming and hollering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and confusing the candidate. And getting on the candidate's nerve. Because mm -hmm. a lot of candidates don't like that. Okay, but we are so we are accustomed, we are accustomed to doing it. And let me tell you something. I had the first lady, the leading lady, to come because when I pray before, I want them to know that they got the Holy Ghost. This is my first time here. They need to hear those folks speaking in tongues. Okay, because when I leave, they say, uh, she said they got no. You heard them speak. See, but I wanted her with me because with her with me, I know she praying. Okay. I really, and, I, and a, a couple other people, I started to call and I said, no, I'll wait. I, I know I'm not going to call their name because uh, <laughs> I don't know the name, but I'm sure they know who I am. I could feel the spirit. I could feel the spirit. You got some marvelous because you're concerned about souls. But it wasn't the time because it's the first time with me being here. And that's why I didn't call for the ministers and the altar workers. I called just for her. Yeah. You notice that? Yes. Yeah. So now, now for now, man, you can be involved. Amen. Amen. Got it. Amen. I think I pointed you. I had you to come too, cause I felt you real good. Okay. She she gonna be bad. Y'all gonna be dynamite. When I leave, everybody that come in here, you all gonna be so dynamite until you gonna pray with them just like that, and they gonna get the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay. Amen. It's gonna take a second because it's the word. Amen. It is the word. And the Bible said, with our faith, it is impossible to please him. Right. So we're not doing anything different. We're just teaching the word. Amen. They were taught tradition. And the enemy is so excited because folk are still holding on to tradition. Right. You know, when they hold on to tradition, you keep the folk at the church half of the night, in the prayer room half of the night, and they go home and still and get nothing. <laughs> So when you walk up here and you exercise in your faith and you pray for them according to the word, the Holy Ghost is a promise. 
one of the promises. And everywhere in the scripture, God fulfilled his promise. But we have to keep up with another deal. I, sometimes I teach you some of the promises of God. Have never been able to finish. It's over 8,810 promises in the scripture. Okay, so we talk about the promises of God. The Holy Ghost has a promise. And all you have to do is receive that. You got to be in a condition. A lot of time, a lot of time. Let me deal with repentance right quick. Let me deal with repentance. Let me deal with repentance. Let me deal with repentance is up here. In the receiving room. And, and even at this altar. When a person get up out of that seat. And come to this altar. Don't try to dissect them and figure out whether they have repented. If a person get up out of that seat. And come to this altar. Don't look at them and say they don't look like they have repented. Uh -huh. You cannot look at a candidate and tell whether or not they have repented. Uh -huh. Repentance comes from the heart. Right. And only Jesus sees the heart. Amen. 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 Thank you for helping us. Yes. We look at them and say they, 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 not ready. they don't look like they repented. If they have enough faith, I mean enough nerve, it takes nerve. You may not think it's a big church, but it's big. But it's a, when you sit back in, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, and every devil is talking to you. Don't you get up? You look crazy. Don't you walk down there? That's what the enemy is saying to them. But if they have enough nerve to get up out of their seat, you're supposed to have enough faith to know that they're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Okay. So don't look at them and say, they don't look like they have repented. All you did was pass your spirit off on them. That's right. Because when they come to the altar, I have enough faith to know that they're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. People receive the Holy Ghost by faith. Yeah. Not hallelujahs, not foaming at the mouth, right. none of that. They had us foaming at the mouth for tools we being purged. To be purged means to be cleansed, and you're cleansed through the word, not foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Right. Yes, dear. So, um, should there be like a separate calling, like when, like when you do an altar call, and you know how some think that they're just coming up with prayer, and then you have some, then then you have. Why you bother me? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love it. I'm teasing, but I love it. I love it. I, I'm gonna get to the altar after a while. I'm still, I'm still working. Y'all, y'all pushing me all kinds of directions. It's okay. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Let me tell you something. I love what you're saying. In case I do miss it, when I get to the altar, I'm looking at the receiving baptism in the altar. Okay, okay. No, let me deal with this now, okay, in case. A lot of places, a lot of places, a lot of churches you go to, when the pastor gives the altar call, sometimes there's more saints at the altar than it is for the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yeah. let me tell you how to deal with that. Yes. When they come up and you know that they don't have the Holy Ghost, and they say, I just want prayer. I love it. You know how to minister to them? You say, okay, I tell you what. God got more for you than prayer. Would you like to have everything that he got for you? Amen. And they're going to say, yes. And then you say, okay, the Holy Ghost is yours just for the asking. Let me tell you, I, Sunday before last, I was at home. This guy came up, he said, I said, what you like for God to do? Because I, I have to work to altar every Sunday I'm home. I sit right there with the ministers. I guess if I didn't get up, my pastor look at me and think, you got to be crazy. Something wrong with you today. I have to work every single Sunday that I'm home. I'm never free. Never. So look at this. This guy came up to me. He said, I want you to pray for my family. And yada, 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 yada. And I looked at him. I said, I'll tell you something. I can pray for you now. And God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. And then you will be equipped to pray for your family. You see what I'm saying? That's how you deal with it. But a lot of places, you got more people that are feet with the Holy Ghost. Now sometimes, I don't bother, I sit them on the front row. Because I'm going to tell you what happens. When I, uh, if you got a lot of candidates at this altar, and family members that already feel with the Holy Ghost, people that's already feel, they come up and want you to pray for them. It breaks the dream of the Spirit. Uh -huh. Be careful. They then skinned and said, listen, can you just sit right here and I'll come back and pray with you after I finish praying for these that need the Holy Ghost. That's how you do it. Okay. Say, so I want you to sit right here. Don't go too far. Just sit right here. Now, don't forget them. I call it thin skin. 
So you had to, you had to move me in. He said, okay, I'm, I'm going to pray with you now. Okay, I'll come back and pray with you. Okay, and, and a lot, this, they don't know. A lot of times, I don't, when I give the altar call, when I give an altar call, I try my best to give the altar call where the deal, only the people that want the Holy Ghost will come. That's what I try to do. But they don't hear you. A lot of folks, a lot of the saints don't hear you. Right. They'll just come. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you ask them to. Keep, and, and, and can I be bad? Mm -hmm. Most times it's the same ones coming every Sunday. Amen. <laughs> don't tell them I said it, but I said it. <laughs> Y'all know how it is. The same ones come every Sunday. So, so today I'm going to let you just sit right here and I'm going to pray for this candidate here and then I come back to you, okay? It's appropriate to do that because really you break the trend of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you pray for somebody who wants the Holy Ghost and then somebody else that just won't pray, okay? But if you know that they don't have the Holy Ghost, I love for them to come to me. They don't have the Holy Ghost and they say, I just want prayer. That's when you minister to them, say, God, got more for you than just prayer. Would you like to have it all? Say, He wants to give it to you. Are you willing to receive it? And then you can pray for yourself. They will receive it just like that. Okay. He that when his souls is wise. That's scripture. He that when his souls is wise. We have to be wise to win them. And they want the Holy Ghost. They, they See, people need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. We, felt, we People said, years ago, said, you need the Holy Ghost just to go to heaven. No, no, no. You need the Holy Ghost to exist down here. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. You need the Holy Ghost here. The stuff that you're going through with, you need a double portion sometime. Right. Come on, yeah. Triple portion. If it's in the search thing. Come on. Because the enemy is on your case. Yes, he is. Yeah, he yeah. reckon he's working your nerve yeah. with the Holy Ghost. He the devil hates me in the feeling this new church. Amen. Amen. That's right. He hates me in the feeling of this new church. Everywhere I go, God feels folk with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay, so the devil can't stand me feeling this new church. When he come and try to pluck my mirror, you know, you talk to the hand, tell him like the kids, talk to the hand, I don't have time to be bothered. Don't have to ever be by. Because yeah. he, he, he hates you. But yes. Oh, I just wanted to ask, should we teach, um, treat the baptismal room the same way? Because I know sometimes, like, even I as a mom want to maybe video or take pictures of this or that and the other. Should it be very sacred as well? Yes. Okay. It should be so sacred. Wait till the person get ready to go in the water and then do the picture. Mm -hmm. Not why they change him. Okay. As a mom. If you can tell the people where well, you can make pictures, don't 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 offend them. Because sometimes these are unsafe people that want to do pictures. So, you know, if you want to do a picture, we'll wait until they get ready to go in the water, okay? Because we don't want you in the we, you know, if you cannot go into the room because that's a sacred place. Yeah. Okay? But just ask them so you can do it. We, now don't throw them, don't hurt them. Okay. Tell them you can make pictures, but after when they get ready to go down in the water. I was at somebody's church, I don't know where. And it was so amazing. It was uh, some folks there was getting ready to get baptized. Some folks was in the audience and wanted to make pictures. I think I was in Niles, Michigan. I think I was in Niles. The Bishop Burrell, listen to this. The young lady, or the young man, whoever, I think it was a, uh, I think it was a guy getting baptized, and the, and the girl was coming to the front to get the pictures. So he had to come up. And he said, "I said, y'all make sure she." get close enough to get the picture. <laughs> I was sitting up. When she went down to make the picture, after he got came up out of the water, he was just rejoicing coming out of the water, okay? I said, now you can have that too. Mm. See, I nailed it. I let her get close enough. <laughs> Come on now, that's how you do them. Mm -hmm. If they don't have the Holy Ghost, make sure they get close enough. Then you witness them as soon as they get the picture. So you can have the two. You see how they, he's excited. Mm -hmm. Come on now, take about a second. Would you like for me to pray for you now? And you can have it. As a matter of fact, you need to be baptized now, just like that. Mm -hmm. Don't let not one minute go by. Y'all got it? Amen. Not one minute go by. And you can be motivated to do this. Amen. You got the same Holy Ghost I got. Amen. Jesus gave you the same spirit he gave me. Amen. Listen, we do not have to go to the Mari show to check, get our spirit checked out. Come on. We got the same DNA. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. <laughs> Did you say yes? I'm, uh, 
I'm just sitting there thinking about it. I'm going back to the repentance thing. You said uh, when they come up, we focus on the repentance. Um, but is that like um, it's a prerequisite, um, right? So don't you have to repent before the? Yes, yes, yes. Listen to this. When that person get up out of their seat and come down here, you're supposed to, in your mind, know that they have repented. They had to repent before they got up and came down. Otherwise, they wouldn't have came. Right. Now, this is how you can deal with it. Don't ask nobody have you repented. You say to them, if it's in your spirit, you can say to them, I know that you have repented. And God is going to give you the Holy Ghost. Okay? You speak because your, your spirit can be a hindrance. If you sit sitting here and you're thinking, well, have they repented? Because they're not crying, you feel like they haven't repented. But crying doesn't constitute repentance. That's true. Never. Okay? Right. They may be getting got caught doing stuff and they regret because they got caught or something they thinking about outside. Mm -hmm. So don't look at the person. You're supposed to believe. See, I, I, I'm so into this. When a person get up by their seat, I'm positive they have repented. If they haven't repented, they wouldn't have got up and came down. God honors that. The fact that they got up and came down. It's repentance. Okay? They can sit and they see repentance. Repentance doesn't constitute me naming off all the stuff that I've done. Mm -hmm. I tell the person, just in case that you think, so let me tell you something. It's a dangerous thing to figure out, well, have they repented? I have not. And you say, well, you feel, have you repented? And they hear in their mind, well, maybe I did this, I did that. They may forget something. Most of us have did so much stuff, we can't think of all that stuff, the name it all. <laughs> so we did so much stuff, you just, and this is what I tell the person when I say, I say, you know what, the fact that you're here, I know that you're repentant. Because you, the, you love the Lord so much, that's why you're down here. I'm bringing them to a point in case they haven't, they did then. I have to believe that. I have to be in a position to believe that God caused them to repent when they got about their seat. So I be careful with it because you can hinder them. So don't let the enemy play with your mindset. They don't look like they have repented. They're not ready to speak into it. You got to go over that. That's what God got you here as an altar worker. This is a hard place to be in in case you don't. It's not an easy job, but it's so marvelous. It is so marvelous, okay? Repentance comes from the heart. We cannot see the heart. Only Jesus sees the heart. Mm -hmm. So if they get up and come down, he is <laughs> nourished them to come. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. And, and the reason why, God, thank you. The reason why I say ask God to give the deserving spirit. Because some people sit in the seat and family members nourish them and tell them to come to the altar. Right. 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 You've had that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So when, if you have the deserving spirit, then you know when they down it because the cannon, because somebody nourished them to come. Mm -hmm. So if you had the desire of spirit, you, know, you can pray. I'm going to pray for you. Listen to me. Two different things. I'm going to pray for you and let you go back to your seat. Amen. Amen. But if they want the Holy Ghost and you have the desire of spirit, you can tell. You say, I'm going to pray with you and let you receive the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You pray for them and send them back to their seat. I'm going to pray for you and let you go back to your seat. When you're ready for the Holy Ghost, then you come back. Mm -hmm. I'll be wasting God's valuable time. I'll waste his valuable time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have nobody at this altar to teeter tottering around with them for a half hour. It's too long. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they want the Holy Ghost, they have to just like that. Mm -hmm. Unless they're going to say a whole bunch of hallelujahs. I had a pastor in Minnesota, a pastor friend of mine in Minnesota. He is too much one of the bishops there. I fly in, they fly me in on Saturday. I do Sunday morning service and fly right back at Sunday evening. 40 and 50 people getting the Holy Ghost at one time. Okay. Then there's another pastor. It's five different churches in Minnesota that I go to. And when I go in, I, and you know, and when I go there, I don't call nobody from no church to tell them I'm there. They hear about it, and some of them are there. This one pastor, he and I are good friends. He said to me, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, People will say hallelujah before they will open their mouth and speak in tongues. 
He said, I had a guy, he said, see, I'd been in his church several times and, and taught his altar workers how to work and what to say. He said, I had a man to come up one Sunday. This man came up. He said, and this man stopped saying hallelujah. He said, I thought about what you, you said. Don't say not another hallelujah. <laughs> I do that. You can only speak one language at a time. Do you want to say hallelujah or are you going to speak in tongues? Right? The Bible said the word is not even in your mouth. And the Bible said he gave them the utter, which means he gave them the ability to speak the language. So the pastor said to me, he said, this guy came up and he started saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, no, don't you say another hallelujah. He said, and then the man went to saying, G, 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 G. He said, no, no more G, G, G. <laughs> he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you go pass out. Hey, pastor told me this. He said, and then the guy, after he couldn't let him sit, GGG said, God, you start saying, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. <laughs> this is a fact. This is a fact. The stuff that people would say before they speak in tongues. And the word, the Bible said, the word is neither even in your mind. That's how close the Holy Ghost is to you. But isn't it amazing how the enemy would try to stop people from speaking in tongues? Be thinking, I'm just thinking it. No, you're not just thinking it. That's the language that he want to give you. Okay, now let me move on. You don't mess me up. <laughs> so the baptismal room, if they in there and they're getting dressed, make the pictures when they when they get ready in the water. Or either if they on their way to the pool. I don't know how your pool is here, but let them, you know, not why they're in there. Okay, that's a sacred spot. And in that receiving room, oh God, I thank you. Let me hit it right quick. Got to go. In that receiving room, if you know your spirit is not right, don't go in there. Amen. That's a sacred place. Amen. We got to have the right spirits in the room, okay? In the, in the, in the delivery room, the doctors and the nurses scrub up before they go in. That's right. Okay? That's so we have to be, we have to be in a certain place, okay? So, so that's a good thing, isn't it? That's yes, a good thing. Good. All right. Anybody have a question? Feel free. Feel free. Question? Okay. Can I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave the baptismal room now. So, oh, baptismal room, when you're in there, do not discuss their clothes. Never mind who the designer is. When you're in the receiving room, you study, in the, in the, when you're in the baptismal room, you study saying, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. This is your day. This is the best thing that can happen to you. You have made the right step. Matter of fact, you can receive the Holy Ghost before you go in the water. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something about what we do when we take people to the water? You know what we do when we take them to the water? We repeat the baptismal ceremony. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. You know what we say when we get ready to baptize? I indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus for, your, for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I indeed, listen to me. I indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Mm -hmm. Most times we say upon the confession of your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, listen. This is what we say. Upon the confession of your faith. Right. We indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. Upon the confession of your faith. That's what you say. Amen. That's the ceremony. Mm -hmm. The candidate haven't confessed a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me show you the appropriate way what God let me to know. He said, listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Upon the confession of your faith. The candidate haven't confessed anything. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's making the confession because you said it. Right. Not the candidate. Right. This is the appropriate appropriate way to do this. When the candidate at some point in time, uh -huh. when that candidate is getting ready to get baptized, when wherever the pastor decides to do it, this is the way it should be done. You should say to that candidate, do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your yes. sins? That's right, that's right. That's right. Do you believe that he rose again? Mm -hmm. Do you want him to become Lord of your life? Yeah. These are the things that you should say. And the candidate is going to say, yes, I believe he died for my sins. I believe that he rose again. I want him to come Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. They are confessing it. Yeah. You say, upon the confession of your faith, the candidate didn't say nothing. Right. But when you say this to them, mm -hmm. then they are confessing it. Mm -hmm. 
The candidate will say yes. So then you say to the candidate, listen to me. Then you say to the candidate, when I take you down in the name of Jesus, well, when you go down in the name of Jesus, whatever, at whatever point you want to do it, you say, when you rise up, if they have already received the Holy when you come up out of the water, you're going to come up out of the water speaking in tongues. At that moment, you're making him Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Confessed it, they believed it, and now they're going to receive it. Whew. Upon the confession of your faith. That's right. Okay, upon the confession. When they baptized me, they didn't ask me that. They, none of you are. You just were baptized. They did the ceremony, and you died. But if you, if they ever said to you, if you didn't already have the Holy Ghost, upon the confession of your faith, and listen, listen, this is the key. You say to them, when you go down in the water and you come up out of the water, you are going to make him Lord of your life. You open your mouth and start speaking in tongues. The moment you come up out of the water, he becomes Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have made the confession. Come on. Come on. Type it is right. This ticket is expensive. I paid a lot for this ticket. <laughs> but it's worth it all. Okay? So you go you go tell your candidate, the Bible said the word is in your mouth. So you go down in the water, you coming up speaking in tongues. You talk to your candidate. When they, when you back when changing them clothes, don't be asking them what designer this is. Don't send them about the designer. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You're not at that point at that time. You're dealing with that soul. Yeah. So you say to them, oh, this is so marvelous. You can really go down in the name of Jesus. It is so wonderful. He loves you so much. He's going to give you that Holy Ghost when you come up out of the water. You're going to be speaking in tongues. Don't try to understand what you said. Don't try to figure it out. Because he said the word is not even in your mouth. You don't have to talk. Just like me, but tell them. You don't have to hold your big King James version up in your hand looking at it, trying to read it. You put it in your spirit and That's right. That's right. That's right. That's good. Y'all got it? Yeah. It'll take about a second. Just a second. Mm -hmm. It's so marvelous. Okay, now, let's. anybody got a question? So before I move any further, you can ask questions. I'm going to give you every scripture I use just in case you missed some last night. Let's talk about the altar. You already done pushed me to talk about the altar anyway. So let me really deal with the altar. Let me show you how we really should work the altar. I need three people to stand. I'm going to show you what you do. Three people come stand right here. I'm going to stand right in front of this. Yeah, you two. Come, baby. Come. Oh, you can come, come, come. Come on. You, you stand right here. Stand right here. You No, turn right there. You will be the candidate. You're going to be the altar worker. And you're going to be an altar worker. Okay. I'm going to leave. I'm abusing you as a candidate. Okay. Yes. This is how you're supposed to do it. This is the appropriate way. When she come up and want the Holy Ghost, you will say to her, what do you want from God? And if she already, like she's ready, you tell the words that's in your mouth, open your mouth and let it flow. Don't put your hand under her chin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Do not do that. You know, at some places you go, people get their hand up under the candidate's mm -hmm. chin. Do not do that. I'm so glad I don't know who's an altar worker here. <laughs> but but the candidate, the candidate is conscious of that, okay? So don't put your hand up under their chin, okay? I, do you hear what I'm saying? See, she's bothering me and I pass you. See, she's bothering me. Some folk don't want your hand in their face. So you and you listen. I never touch a person until I make the nuts. I said, I'm going to lay hands on you. And see, if, if, he, if I know she's doubting, I touch her right here. I'm going to lay hands on you. Be careful. Be so careful that you don't push nobody down. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Do you know last week when I was in New York, a young lady asked a question. She said, what happened when people put their hands on the head and push you down? And the pastor said to me, he said to me afterwards, he said, I was waiting to see how you was going to deal with that. <laughs> Y'all think I tell you, he said, when she asked you that question, he, she said, well, some places I've gone, now she's been around church. She's not Holy Ghost, she's been around church. She's a college student. She got the Holy Ghost last Saturday morning and was baptized. But she's been around church for 
She said, some churches I've gone to, they push your head all the way back in the past to push you down. I said, they didn't mean any harm, baby. Maybe you just fell. Some folks just fall. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the pastor told me, he said, I was waiting to see. Because we, we had like four pastors sitting in the audience, right? Yeah. I said, Jesus, I'm going to answer. I said, they don't mean any harm. I said, sometimes people just fall like that, you know. They're not really pushing. I said, hey, you know, it just happened that way. But look, um, seriously, do not put your hand in their face. Because a lot of people are very sensitive. They don't want you to do that. Okay. You tell the candidate, I'm going to lay hands on you. Men folk, you lay hands on their shoulder, uh -huh. not in their chest. That's right. A lot of times I lay hands on the chest. And the men are women. But do not, men folk, do not put their hand in a woman's chest. You put your hand. So I'm going to hands on you. Get touch on your shoulder. Amen. Okay. Amen. Just like that. Okay. Amen. That's what you do. All right. And, and be careful when you touch him. Don't push him down. Do not. Try not to put your hand. Not try not. Do not. That's right. Do not do this. No. Y'all see me? Yeah. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> see? Do not. Do not. I'm not feeling this. Don't do that. Do not. Okay. You cannot rub the Holy Ghost in. So why are you sticking your hand up under their neck? Oh, no. You know, you've seen folks doing this, shaking them. What is going on? Get your hand out of my neck. Okay. Now, see, and listen, and listen. Once they receive the Holy Ghost, once they receive the Holy Ghost, you know what? Don't be stroking them now. I've seen that happen. I've seen it before. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I know I'm on it. You see folks stroking them down like they like they doing something. All of a sudden they quicken and shaking like you did. Jesus gave them the Holy Ghost. You didn't give them nothing. <laughs> Jesus did it. Right. So just be careful, okay? Be careful, cause because people are very conscious. You know why you have to be careful because you got folk in the audience yeah. right. that's observing you. That's right. And they would come to the altar, but they don't want to come because you they saw you doing that. Right. And they don't want you to do that to them. But now this is how you do it. You are talking to her. In the meantime, while you're talking to her about the Holy Ghost, you are praying for him. That's good. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You two are supposed to be so connected. You're going to only talk to her for a few seconds. And you're going to look at each other and you're going to yield the flow to her. And then she's going to start talking to her. And in the meet, you pray for her. Yeah. Got it? It's like a two-person CPR. Like, they get tired from the compressions, you know, pumping that blood through. It's like, okay, then you switch. And then you recut. Let me wreck her nurse. And she's a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let me, let me help you. No, no. One of the young ladies at the church. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to call her this afternoon. She had fractured her foot a few weeks ago. Let me tell you what she said to me one Sunday, because I had to do sessions at the church, okay? Let me tell you, we had one time we had like 50 some people filled the Holy Ghost, okay? We did after service, after Pentecost Sunday. Let me tell you what this young lady said to me the other week, a few weeks ago. She said, you know what? I was thinking about the way you work with hope and the way the Holy Ghost is. She said, you know what? You know what a defibrillator is? I said, yeah. She said, those of us that are filled with the Holy Ghost, we should be just like a defibrillator. I said, what? She said, yeah. We should be so loaded with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. When we lay hand on somebody else, they should just vibrate. <laughs> that's what she said. That thing really stuck with me. We, yeah, and that's true. We're supposed to be so anointed until when we touch folk, they should be able to feel the presence of God. Amen. You follow me? Amen. That's what we should be. Okay, so just like a defibrillator. Yeah. But this is how we work. So we don't put our hands on them. We don't stroke them down. And you all are so connected. And one is not in this ear hollering and the other one over here hollering. Come on. <laughs> yes. right, right. Some candidates can't take that. Amen. Can't, can't take it. So you, you talk to them real softly. Yeah. According to that personality, everybody don't have a loud personality. Everybody not screaming and foaming at the mouth. So when she, y'all know how to do this now. Okay, you yield the flow, but you're so connected. Until you know, that's why all the workers need to have a meeting at least once a month, uh, every six weeks. So if anything is going on in the church, you don't get on the phone and tell somebody else you talk amongst each other. Y'all can sit down. Y'all got it? Amen. That's how you do it. Okay, no stroking them up on the cheek. 
right. No one's shaking them. You can't rub it in. Okay. They don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. Because they are sensitive. They are sensitive. They see you. They see you. Yes. What about when you're, you're working the altar and somebody seems as if they're they're laboring? Um, they're, they're exhausting themselves. You're not, you're, you're saying, you know, he's not in your mouth. You're trying to calm them down, but you find them just wanting working to get into the Yeah, just pushing yeah. too hard. Yeah. You know what you tell them? Just relax. Just relax. You did that last time. Then you talk to them. Okay. Them just relax. Come on. You don't have to work for it. again. You talk to them like that. See, it's just relax, it's a gift. And the Bible says the words is in your mouth. Okay? You start quoting the scripture. The words is in your mouth. You, it's only going to take a second. Mm -hmm. You're going to be speaking in a second. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. You don't work for a gift. Nobody works for a gift. You calm down. I tell them all the time. I say, your birthday roll around, Christmas roll around, all you do is receive the gift. Mm -hmm. You don't work for it. This is a gift, so you don't work for it. Do you so you're going to receive it. Do you ever, do you ever like the thing? Just continue to keep going in that in that manner. Do you ever stop them? Yes. Okay. Thank that's, you. That's, that's what I mean. I mean, like, you, like, you don't stop. want to, to interrupt them and then start. Talking no, you can them. interrupt them. Okay. You interrupt them. You're not gonna let them to continue to go on that same pace because they're not receiving the Holy Ghost anyway. Mm -hmm. So you interrupt them. Okay. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's only gonna take a second now. Just relax. Okay. I know you want him real bad. And the Holy Ghost is not it, it's He, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We say it, but it's He. Okay, you're going to receive Him. Okay, so you can just relax. He's right here. He's waiting for you to receive Him. He wants you to receive Him better than you want Him. Mm -hmm. You talk positive to Him, okay? But stop them. I, I've had people speaking in tongues. And let me tell you, I've had them speaking in tongues. See, there's over 3,000 languages in tongues. Mm -hmm. I've had people speaking in tongues, and it seemed like they were going to stay in that same vein at all times. I would stop them. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. It's another language in there. And you're going to speak another language. Mm -hmm. And you know what they do? I said, now this time when you open your mouth, you go into the next language. What have I done? Built that faith. Mm -hmm. The only reason why people speak in the same language all the time is because their faith level is not up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, So they go right from one language to the other language. From one to the other. That's what they do. You had your hand up, sir. Yes. Uh, the, the Bible speaks of different gifts. How's that in? It, it, how's that different than uh, mm -hmm. being filled of the Holy Spirit? See, the, the the different gifts in the Scripture. That's not talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. The Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit in order to receive the gifts. Okay. The Holy Spirit. You, your initial evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. That's your uncle, Acts 2 and 4. Acts 2 and 4 says, and they was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to write it down. Acts 2 and 4, that's your initial evidence. Your initial evidence is speaking in tongues. Okay? Has nothing to do, and that is what you have to do. And I understand what you're saying. You're talking about the other gifts of the Spirit. Okay? You, you, you get the Holy Ghost first and then ask God to give you the other gifts of the Spirit. The Scripture said we have to desire the greater gifts. Okay? And you can do that. But you need the Holy Ghost first because you need the power. See, Acts 1 and 8 said after the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive power. So you need that power in order to be effective with the gifts. Okay? Okay. All right. Somebody else had their hand up. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I wondered if he was wanting to know the difference between the gift of the tongue and the interpretation of the tongue versus the evidence of speaking in tongues. I wondered if he was wanting to know the difference. You, the gift, the let me, let me answer her thought. If you don't Go ahead. He's going to Well, basically, what I was asking, I hear people say, um, I'm speaking in tongue, and then I hear them say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm saying, you you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but still not speaking in tongue. In that scripture. I'm asking. Acts 2 and 4. Let's turn right quick. I'm there. Yeah, you're there. I'm there. Acts the second chapter. 
in verse 4. Let's read it. What did it say? Says, read the inscription. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues mm -hmm. as the Spirit gives them utterance. Okay. When they were filled, once they were filled, they spoke in tongues. There was the evidence. So you have to speak in tongues to know that He's there. Mm -hmm. If you never spoke in tongues, you never know that you have Him, right? That's true. Huh? I often wonder. That's your evidence. Okay. Folks walk around and say, I got a million dollars. And never, nobody never see it. Uh, they walk around with holes in their shoes. Mm -hmm. Nobody know you got a million dollars because you're not exemplifying the fact that you got a million dollars. Okay? You're not going to walk around with holes in your shoes. You got all this money. You go buy you some shoes and put on your feet. If you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in tongues. That is your evidence of knowing that you have the Holy Ghost according to the scripture. So you said to me... And it didn't say you have to cry. So you said to me, everyone that's filled with the Holy Spirit speaks in tongues. According to the scripture, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. According to the scripture. That's your evidence. That's the way you knew you had him in you. Okay? Amen. It is not, it don't take but a second. It don't take but a second. That's why he put it in there. That's why he put it in there in, in St. Luke, the 11th chapter, verse 9 through 13. He says, he that believed on me as the scripture has said. No, that, that's St. John, the 7th chapter, verse 8. He that believed on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. Many languages. If you believe on him as the scripture has said, the scripture says, ask and it shall be given. Seeking you shall find, not that the door shall be opened unto you in the book of St. Luke. And at 13 verse, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that, what? Ask Him. All you have to do is ask Him, Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. It's so easy. Thank yes, sir. I think it's powerful what you said last night about um, how long people and I think a lot of people get caught up on that and I never, I never really thought about that you know, uh, yes. when they were in the upper room who spoke long and who spoke short there you go. I mean, by them all being on one accord yes. nobody, um, nobody time, nobody longer than who or, you know no so, time uh, limit mm -hmm. no time and it's in the scripture, nowhere in the scripture that tell you how long you have to speak Right. but that's our tradition and let me help you out real good. When a person is speaking in tongues, I don't care if they said two words, they know they spoke in tongues. They know they didn't learn it in school, they know they spoke in tongues. They may not act like it, but they know they said something they never said before. Mm. They know that. And let me tell you something, what they'll do, they'll act like they don't know. I will bring them right back to that point. You hurt yourself. Open that mouth and keep on talking. That's how you deal with them. You hurt yourself going back and keep talking. You're not telling them they got it. Okay, you don't tell folks they received it. You don't do that one. But you're telling them they hurt themselves. They hurt themselves. They know that they didn't learn that language in school. They know they heard some words that they missed. And you know what they had to nurse it. I said something. I don't know what I was saying. We know that. So what do they call that? The Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Okay. You didn't learn it in school, but you heard it. And you know you spoke. Nobody else told you to say it. You said it because the God glory gave it to you. And you don't tell them that they receive it. That spirit will tell them so. Amen. If you notice how I, was, how I dealt with them last night, I questioned different ones. I never asked them what happened to them. Don't ever do that because this, the, the experience is so great, people cannot explain to you what happened to them. This is what I said to them What were you doing? What were you doing? They know they wasn't eating, they know they weren't paying bills. What were you doing when you were standing up here? What were you doing? And they said, I was talking. How were you talking? In some funny language. So what do they, you got to walk them all the way through it just like that, okay? Yes, dear. How do you deal with um, some uh, the people that you heard them? You, you know, you're up there, you're working with them, you heard them. 
However, they're, they're very adamant that no, I, I didn't, I didn't speak or I didn't hear myself speak. And then they continue to say that, but then they continue to come up to the altar to seek God to get the Holy Ghost. But you actually know that they received it, but do you keep on? Working? No, no. You talk to them like this. You say to them, "Now listen to me. This is how you talk." To said, number one, you have to believe that God has done what he has done already. He can't do any more for you until you accept the fact of what he's already done. You first have to be a believer. You first have to believe. Now, I'm going to pray. This is what you do. I'm going to pray with you again. I want you to listen to yourself. I tell them, listen to what you're saying. Listen to it. And then I stop. Did you learn that language in school? They said, no. I said, so what do they call that? And they'll take you all the way around to you all kinds of stuff. It is so amazing to me. People will say everything, but I got the Holy Ghost. They'll say, I feel good. Why do you feel good? Something happened to me. This is what they may say. What happened to you? Say some words. Oh, really? And I know they can't tell us. That's why I ask, you don't explain. You don't say to them, what happened? You ask them, what were they doing? They know they weren't eating. They know they weren't paying bills. They know they were speaking in tongues. Amen. Okay, you may have to keep repeating it to them. And if a person keep coming to the altar, you say, okay, I'm going to let you sit down today. I'm going to talk to you. Read the scripture, Acts 2 and 4. I let them read that scripture. Then I say to them, now, did any of this happen to you? They go say, yeah. I'm going to say, well, what does the Bible say? They go say, oh. I said, did you hear yourself? And they go say, yes. I said, oh, okay. So you don't have to come back up here no more. Because you know, you're going you to keep walking with him and he's going to take you to the next level. See, a lot of time. Let me tell you the secret. A lot of time people will keep coming back to the altar because they want to feel good. You hear me? They want to feel good. They don't realize it's come through being faithful to God and having a personal relationship with him. You can't just come to this altar and let me pray for you every Sunday and let you feel good. Come on now. You understand? Is it possible that people who never receive or, you know, have an expectation to receive, they're expecting when you say the, um, the Holy Ghost is going to fall. They're expecting something more stronger or powerful or... You know, it's yes, you're right. They expect us something out of the ordinary. They feel like they when we talk to them and give them scripture like I do according to scripture, they feel like that's too easy. Mm -hmm. That's what they think. Oh, that's too easy. The Holy Ghost is something got to knock me out. No, no, it's easy because the Lord's way is easy. All He wants you to do is trust Him. You talk to Him like that, just trust Him. Okay, they feel like they see. I don't care what happened, where you been. Somebody, I don't care if they Catholic, Jehovah Witness, they don't heard how we do. They heard about us, so they feel like they got to come in here expecting to get knocked down and drug out. <laughs> and we don't do that. It's scripture, scripture. So we, we, it's so hard sometimes to unteach bad stuff. Yeah, yes. Bad stuff. Tradition. We move from tradition to revelation. Okay, it's easy. All Jesus wants you to do is ask him for it. He's giving it out. Receive the scriptures and receive ye the Holy Ghost. Not beg and receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then he said the word is neither even in your mouth. Okay, now let me move a little further. Let me move on. Let me move. Should men pray with men? Uh, separate women pray with women. Either or, it doesn't matter. Men can pray with women. Women can pray with men, vice versa. Okay? And I know some places that, oh, just the men pray with the men. Come on, loose here. Mm -hmm. Get yourself together. These are all souls. Right. Come on now. So it doesn't matter who pray with who. Okay, but it's the way you touch them, so make sure you're touching them in the proper way, okay? Y'all got it? Okay, all right. <clears throat> so, any more, any more questions? I haven't talked an hour and a half already. <laughs> any more questions? I do have a question for uh, something you said last night. Yesterday. Feel free. I wrote it down. 
Oh, she moved down. Check me out last night. <laughs> so you had um, mentioned uh, about the lady that you were talking on the phone. She wanted to do a three-way call. Yes. Okay, and you said that um, you was like, that the Holy Spirit had spoke to you and was like, no, have her to call you. Because if you've been seeking the Lord with her for three months, then you must still have the faith that she can break through. So my question is, so does that mean that I didn't or I don't have enough faith? Because I've sought the Lord with us individuals. So was I lacking faith because they didn't break through? You were seeking the Lord with other individuals. I have. Okay. And they didn't receive it. Okay. At that particular time, you didn't have enough faith in, in the scriptures to probably quote the scripture to them. If you pray with them now, they will come through just like that. Mm. Your faith level right now is at a different level. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are not ready. It's not always you. Sometimes they're not ready. They are here. A lot of times people come to the altar because somebody nourished them and told them to come. Okay. And sometimes they are just trying to do something. They feel like, oh, this is why the autumn here, I can't say it. You speak to this spirit. I speak to the spirit so many times, I command doubt to go. You speak to the doubt and spirit, okay? I command doubt to go in the name of Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. God is too dynamite for me. Brought up in church, around church, when you, most church kids, You've heard people say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Right. Let me tell you what God dealt with me about that. He said, why are you binding them when you want to cast them out of to the pit? You don't bind them if you want them to go. <laughs> Type it is right. <laughs> Make any sense? Yes. So why am I binding them? If I'm binding them, I'm, t I'm tying them up here, right? So I want to tell them, I want to cast that demon out and send it back to the pit in the name of Jesus. Make sure you say that. And I, you never hear me say, I bind you. I, no, no, no. I'm not binding you. I'm casting you out of here. Mm -hmm. That's why the devil hates me. I'm giving y'all some good secrets. Yes. You know, I mean, we, we, we've been around church a long time. You've heard it so many times. I bind you. What for what? I'm not binding you. I don't want you sitting up here. I want you out of here. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hear what I'm saying? You got it. You got it. That's why when they bind them and they, they bind them, they stay right there. They right there. They bind them because they step. God revealed that to me. He said, no, no, no. Don't bind them. He said, you cast them out. Don't even say I bind them. Come on now. God, I thank you. Uh, okay. It's, it's just amazing how, you know, the enemy fights. He, he can't stand me. Don't worry. But you, you know what? The person that you've been praying with, the person that you've been, the person that you've been praying with, don't worry. Uh, if they want the Holy Ghost, get them on the phone. Tell them to call me. Get them in tomorrow. If they said they can't come tomorrow, give them my phone number. They were here. They were here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, one of them was Jay, the big tall guy that you was. Um, um, yeah, and, and the other one is sitting right there. The other one was sitting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, um, don't worry. She gonna be. She gonna. She gonna be in the second episode. Don't worry. She gonna speak. Don't worry about it. Amen. Let me. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. Do you know, sometimes, we don't mean any harm. Listen to me, this is what the Lord is saying to me. We don't mean any harm, but when a person been coming to the altar for so long, let somebody else pray with them. Because the yeah. first thing, I'm telling you this is what the Lord is saying. So many times, when that person, if they've been, if they've been down here 10 times, the first thing the Spirit will say when you see them again, oh, here they come again. Let somebody else pray with them. And you be you on someplace else. You didn't mean any harm, but it's the human side of us. I, I work with the people at the National. 
And I, not, not they done took me, I worked with Global Evangelism as well. Okay, I sit with the Board of Bishops, we put the Global Evangelism, we travel all over. Okay, for people to get the Holy Ghost. Okay, and so many times, if I'm praying with a person, I will say to the, another person, you pray with them, and I'll walk to somebody else. Yes. Okay, I do that, mm -hmm. okay? That's because I, I know, no, the Lord said, no, you let somebody else pray with them. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. It's, it's time, right? You guys, take, write every scripture down that I'm giving you right quick. Hurry up, write them down. I gave my last night, but I want you to, I want you to be able to work with souls when I leave. I want you to be able to get on your phone and talk to folk and say, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost right now. Yeah. Won't take but a minute. Uh, I, I was looking for this last night. I thought I must have left my stuff somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Just like this woman all the way in Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. All the way in Denver. A Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. That thing messed me up. If God can use me to pray for her all across the country, he don't need me to be in your face. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's giving out the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay? Amen. So I just got to have enough faith when I pray for him that he'll do it. See, you have the same spirit I have. No DNA checking out. It's the Holy Ghost. God filled me. He gave you the same spirit. So let him use you the same way. Amen. It may take a while for you to get there. Mm -hmm. But stay in the scriptures and get the scriptures and quote the scriptures to the candidate. And let me tell you, thank you, Jesus. Don't feel bad if they don't come through right away. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't give up. Keep working with them. Because your spirit, your, your spirit, your faith level will go to the place where it's supposed to be. Amen. Don't let the devil say, uh-huh, it didn't happen. And I'm going to tell you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you may pray with one here and they receive you, go pray with another, they don't get it. Right. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. They're just not ready. Amen. Okay? So it's all good. Amen. It's all good. Okay, write the scripture down. I, I didn't quote this scripture last night, but I usually do. Psalms 119, verse 165. I usually quote this when I'm in a, Psalms 119, verse 165. In case you ever have to minister anywhere, the scripture says, Psalms 119, verse 165, it says, Grace, peace have they, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend thee. I usually use that because I tell people the way I'm teaching, you won't get offended. <laughs> And I'm in the Bible. Yes, yes. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend thee. Mm -hmm. Right? So you won't get offended because I'm going against your tradition. Amen. Amen. That's the word. <laughs> God, I thank you. He's so marvelous. Okay, let's write every scripture down. Sing. I'll write down Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. Amen. Okay. That scripture. You, we dealt with it last night. Dealt with unity. On the day of Pentecost, it was unity. In that upper room, it was unity. It was unity. They was with one accord. The Bible don't say they was on. We used the two and we say on, but the Bible said they was with. All the way through the scripture, I think it's about 13 times in the book of Acts, the Bible said they was with one accord. Mm -hmm. Not on, but they was with. Same mind, the same desire, expecting the same thing to happen. Okay? So, so, so that in that second verse, I use that second verse all the time. Okay, the Bible said it happened suddenly, so you're going to get this in your spirit. It's going to happen suddenly. Tell your candidates, it's going to happen suddenly. Oh. And you bring your Lord in. You don't look for him without any youngest because the Bible said the word is not even in your mouth. You, okay, it's going to happen suddenly. And that third and that fourth verse said they was all filled with the Holy Ghost. That fourth verse is so amazing. They was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak of the tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. That means as Jesus gave them the ability to talk, they talk. Mm -hmm. He gave us the ability to speak English. Mm -hmm. He don't speak it for us. <laughs> the same God that gave you the ability to speak English is the same God that's given you the ability to speak in tongues. Right. The scriptures say he gave them the utterance. So you exercise in your faith and know, oh, he's given me the ability to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. I hear the words. Because he's giving them to you. And don't come telling me you don't hear no words you do here. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to say what he's giving you to say. You might, it don't sound right to you. It sounds funny to you. And you're saying, I heard somebody else speaking. That's your language that you open your mouth and say it. Uh -huh. That's right. mm -hmm. 
by faith you're going to talk, okay? How soon is it going to happen? Why? Because he's giving you the utterance. He's giving you the ability to speak to him. Okay, now move on. Uh, Psalms 81.10. So write it down. Psalms 81.10 says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. He says, open your mouth wide enough. So when you come to the altar, you don't speak in tongues through your teeth. Mm -hmm. You do as the Bible says. The Bible don't say speak in tongues through your teeth, right? That's right. Right. Come on, y'all. That's right. You know how the candidates come to the altar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's bad. How they do it? Take all tight, jaws tight. The Bible says, I didn't say it. Open your mouth. The Bible says, open your mouth out. Wow. And it don't mean just do this. Right. Right. It means when you open your mouth, you open your mouth in faith, knowing that you're going to start speaking That's right. in tongues. That's right. That's right. Okay? That's right. Uh, okay. Uh, St. Luke 11, chapter verses 9 to 13. The scripture says, Ask and it shall be given, seek your self, I'm not going to do it, shall be opened unto you. Okay. It's St. Luke 11, chapter verse 9 through 13. Mm -hmm. So when they tell you, why well, can't you say hallelujah? You go to the Bible say ask. You take them again. The Bible says ask. He didn't say say hallelujah. The Bible says ask. Ask and it shall be given. All of God's shells are loaded. Matter of fact, they're downright explosive. If you look it up in the Greek or the Hebrew, the word shell, let me blow you away. That actually means it's already done. Mm. It actually means that it's already done. Mm. Ella Levelt and Dane and I, we worked together for many years. And, and I was saying, the Bible says shell, the Bible says shell. I said, as a matter of fact, all the God's shells are loaded. I would always say that, right? So he got, he got provoked. He said to me, he said, wait a minute. Why are you always saying God's shells are already loaded? I said, yeah. He went and checked it out, and he said, he sent me the thing. We, we got the paper. I got the paper in my briefcase. I think it's at the hotel. All of God's shells the Lord. He checked it out in the Greek and the Hebrew and brought it to me. He said, look at this. You don't even know what you're saying. I said, no, but God gave it to me. He said, it actually means it's already done. If people just can believe this, it's already done. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a whole other thing right there. Yeah. Oh. You better come on now. Oh, oh you better. <laughs> uh, here's some stuff, Pastor. Here's some stuff that God has given me. The folk are not ready for it. I keep talking about it. That's good. That's, that's, that's a whole class. Come on now. See, see, class. see. Take it and run with it. Send me the notes. <laughs> Send me the notes. Take it and run with it. Send me the notes. I'm available. <laughs> okay. Now, let me, let me, let me. Let me mess you up real good. Turn into the book of, write this one down, Job, the 29th chapter, verses 22 and 23. I'm going to be through in a few minutes. Job, the 29th chapter. We didn't read it last night. I want you to turn to it. Job, the 29th chapter, write it down, verses 22 and 23. This one is going to hurt you. So I'm going to take a second. Let's read Job. Let's read it. Job, the 29th chapter, verses 22 and 23. Read it. What did he say? Read it. After my words, After my they word. speak not again, yeah. and my That's speech crazy. dropped unto them. And they waited for me as for the rain, mm -hmm. and they opened their yeah. mouth wide yeah. as for the latter rain. Oh, read it again. <laughs> After my words, they spake not again, uh -huh. and my speech dropped unto them. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth how? Why? Why? As for the latter rain, which is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Okay. After my word, listen to me. Listen to what the scripture said. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. The Bible said, after my word, they spake not again. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me. A lady from our church used to be at the church that I used to attend. This lady said, I have a sister in Allentown, Pennsylvania that's been tearing for 10 years. Okay? She said, can I pay your fare and you fly there? And I'll take you there. We'll go there. And so she can get the Holy Ghost. I said, yeah. So we did that. I, made, I said, let me make the reservations because we're not wasting God's valuable time. 
They picked us up in Allentown, Pennsylvania at 9.30 in the morning. We drove a whole hour to the house, all the way up in the mountains. We got to the house and sit down. We got out to the house and sit down. And the lady was sitting on the couch and it was her sister. And I was sitting there letting them have a conversation because I mean, I'm no God gonna do this thing. I couldn't pray for you in the airport and went on back home. But look at this. The lady been tearing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Hear me now. This is what I said to her. At nine minutes to 12, I would never forget it. I'm very time conscious. At nine minutes to 12, I looked at the clock. I said to her, I said, I understand you've been seeking God for the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. She said, baby, I have tarried all night long. I've left the church and I've gone to the house and I've had a shower and went to work. I said, with absolutely no voice. She said, yes. I go, they must have with you all night. <laughs> she said, yes. I said, tell me what happened. She said, absolutely nothing. Let me tell you what I said to her. She was sitting on the couch. I said, this is exactly what I said to her. I said, I'll tell you what. I want you to give God two hallelujahs. And the third time you open your mouth, you're going to be speaking in tongues. The God of glory said, no hallelujahs. I said, no hallelujahs. I was so scared. He said, read my word. Mm. Job the 29th chapter, verses 22 and 23. He said, after my word, they speak not again. But my speech dropped upon them. They opened their mouth wide as for the rain and for the latter rain, which is the Holy Ghost. I said, Jesus. He said, let her read this and take her to Acts, the second chapter, in verse 2. She started reading. She read this, and I'm messed up by this time because I want you to say two hallelujahs, and God said no. <laughs> he said, after my word. Are y'all getting it? Yes. yes. What is this word? He said, Acts, the second chapter, in verse 2. How soon did it happen? Suddenly. He said, let her read my word. No hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The woman started reading that. Suddenly they came to the South America. That's a verse you read. And she got choked up. And I'm sitting here a mess. Because this is the first time this has ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. God said, not one hallelujah after my word. Let her read my word. She read it again. She started reading the second time. She got to the point where she said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. She went right off speaking in tongues just like that. Mm. What does the Bible say? No, after my word. I'm helping you guys. Listen to me. If you got a professional terrier, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we all got some, a professional terrier, show them this scripture. After my word, they spake not again. You build in their faith. The Bible said, after his word, they spake not again. But my speech dropped upon them. They opened their mouth how? Wide as for the latter rain, which is the Holy Ghost. Let them read the word. Take them to Acts the second chapter and let them read that. And it's going to happen just like that. Not after I say hallelujah, but after I read his word. It messed me up. But that is the word of God. He that believeth on me as the now, I want y'all to digest that within your spirit. Okay? And that's St. John, the 7th chapter, verse 38. Write it down. So you can connect those two scriptures, Job. If you got a professional terror, you got somebody that seems like they're not coming through, let them read the scripture after my word, after my word. After, and you build that faith after you read his word. You're not going to speak one word of English. You're going to start speaking in tongues. Okay? Amen. All right. Sister, it's scripture. Yeah, please, please yeah. John, St. John, John, the 7th chapter. In verse 38. Right there with that. That portion. God revealed that scripture to me when I was in L.A. God said, you listen to what I'm saying to you. I said, wait a minute, Lord. This is a Saturday morning. He says, listen to what you're reading. He that believes in me as the scripture has said. So wait a minute. He said, P 
people have to believe on me as the scripture has said it. Not as they think it, but you got to believe on me as the scripture has said it. He said, I see it by your stripes on the hill. He said, I've never seen a righteous forsaken. I see baby red. <laughs> and on and on and on and on and on and on. Okay. But we got to believe on him as the. Okay. So, Romans 10, chapter and verse 10 and 8. Romans 10 and 8. A portion of that scripture says, the word is neither even in your mouth. Romans 10 and 8. Okay. I'm going to be through in a second. Since so you're in Romans, Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat, not drunk, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Quit letting these folks get excited and jump up and down. They don't have no Holy Ghost. You know how we think they taught us? Get excited. For what? You don't have nothing. The scripture says, Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is what? Right. Not meat, not drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. Okay. You know we be hitting them and bumping them upside the head. Get some joy. Come on, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Amen. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Yeah, in the Holy Ghost. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move on. <sighs> more scriptures. Acts the second chapter, Acts the 19th chapter and verse 6. You hear me talking about the laying on of hands. Everybody don't have the gift of laying on of hands. I don't mess up no churches when I travel. But God has given some folk the gift of laying on of hands. Okay. Acts the 19th chapter and verse 6. By the laying on of hands, people receive the Holy Ghost. Now, Acts the 8th chapter, verses 12 through 17 will show you, and you can make a little note outside and say, not everyone. Not everyone. Read it when you get home. Acts the 8th chapter, verses 12 through 17. While Peter was preaching, they call, he called for Philip and John to come down and lay hands on him. If he had had the gift of laying on their hands, he would have to call for them. That's right. Okay? So everybody don't have to have the gift. So when I leave them here, everybody won't be slapping for laying on their hands. <laughs> but it's in order to lay hands. And I know, I know it's in your spirit. The Bible said lay hands, something on no man. That's not even talking about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. No, it's not. No, it's not. Go home and check it out. Right. Okay, I've done my homework. Right. <sighs> Jesus, you're bad. Yes, he is. Don't you love him? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's good. He's so wonderful. Okay, I think that's the last scripture. So not everyone has. Let me let me give you this. I did not ask for what I have. I was in Antigua. I know you won't know what make me tick. It's the Holy Ghost. I was in Antigua, and God spoke to me. You got three minutes. You guys can get the Holy Ghost. Don't worry. You got three. Minutes. You got three minutes. You will get the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about it. Amen. You get the Holy Ghost. I was in Antigua in uh, whatever year. I believe it was in 1978. 78, I think. Yeah, because I was in full time ministry. I worked for United Airlines. I used to work for United full time, okay? Drove, went all across the country. My son was 11 years old and wanted to go to London and see the changing of the gods. And I, we, okay, my husband and I, my, my son and my daughter, tickets round trip, $60. All we paid was half pay at the hotel. I spent more money on food because they didn't like the food than anything else, okay? But at the age of 11, they got pictures and stuff. We was in London and even changed it with the changing of the gods. And they talk about it to this day. My kids are My son's a minister in Barstow, California, dynamite preacher. He loves it. He talks to me all the time. He's, a, he's, he's so into computer. He does all of the work at the church for the past. And, you know, draw, he's a contractor, does everything. But anyway, my daughter is a single parent, and she's doing so well. She's a she had about she they want to give her twelve children. She got three, and they they are teenagers now, and they they she mom to them, and they won't let her nobody. She's been having them since they was little stuff. And and can I just give you this one right quick before going any further? The little boy he called her from she going to church. He he called her from school. No, he sent her a text message. He sent her a text message the last year. He said, Granny. I want Jesus in my life from school. Mm -hmm. So she sent him a text, okay, fine. 
And he told her he wanted to get baptized that Sunday when they was going to church. So she said to me, uh, uh, my wants to get baptized. What do you think? I said, let them. You don't miss the jury. They got a mind of their own. They sit in the church and hear the word, let them get baptized. Come on now. Come on. Oh, don't mess up, folks, because they say, you're not ready. You don't know whether they're ready or not. You don't know how God is dealing with that heart. Let them alone. Uh -huh. I said, let him get baptized. I said, but I tell you what, this is what you tell him. Tell him when he go down in the water, he coming up and let Jesus become Lord of his life. Yes. He going to start speaking in tongues when he come up out of the water. Let me tell you something. I got pictures on my camera. That little fellow went down in Jesus' name. They baptized that little fella. He came up out of the water speaking in tongues. Mm. Now listen to this. His little sister, yeah. about a year and a half younger than him, she looked at him and told him, he said, uh, uh, Marlena, you need to get baptized. Now he witnessed though. He's a, a little preacher. He witnessed it too. She had nerves that I don't need to be, I don't need to get baptized. I can't imagine a little stuff. But jump in the shower two, three times a day, jumping in the swimming pool, but don't want to get baptized. See, this is a trick of the devil. Uh -huh. He wrecked her nerve. He kept telling her. And my daughter said, Mom, you need to talk to him because he's really getting on her nerve. I said, baby, don't just don't say nothing else. I come on, she's gonna get baptized. So look at this. One Sunday they went to church. One Sunday they went to church. When they went to church, that particular Sunday was too funny. Went to church, the preacher preached, gave the altar call. She sit in that seat. My daughter said, didn't sit there, she screwed. Didn't, didn't say anything. Marvin said, no, that cutting his little eyes out like you need to be getting up. You know, he ain't saying no, because I done told him no, said no more, right? So, you know, he just, I said, you just pray, go pray, go pray. You can't, don't you bother. Now, I had to really talk to him. So look, so look now, they know, they know what I stand for. They know I'm teaching. People get the Holy Ghost like that. They know that, okay? This, this is little stuff, y'all. So look at this. The pastor had finished preaching, they done dismissed, and they done got in the car. Get ready, pull off. My daughter said, uh, Marlene said, Granny, comes to Granny, I want to get baptized. My daughter said, now, yes, right now, I got to do it right now. <laughs> Church is over with everything. They took her back in there. Uh -huh. Baptized that little thing, she came up out of the water speaking in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. This is little stuff, y'all. Little stuff. Okay. So now, when I was in, when I was in, when I was in Antigua, I said to God, God spoke to me and told me how He's going to use me, and I told Him no. I gave him all kind of excuses. I'm working for the airline. And yada yada yada, and you went on and I named, he named it. Because I had another meeting right after that. We were doing crusades mm -hmm. in Memphis, Tennessee. When I came home, because God had spoke to me in Antigua and told me what he's going to do through the scripture. Yes. Everything he gave me, he gave me through the scripture. Okay, he gave me Isaiah 41.10. Okay, you can read it when you get home. Mm -hmm. Okay, he gave me Galatians 2 and 20. He says, not you doing it, but it's the Christ that liveth in you. And then my next concern was, God, what are the people going to think? When I lay hands on folk, he said, Jeremiah 1 and 8, fear not their faces. I said, Jesus, I was so messed up. So I was talking to the minister. There was 27 of us in Antigua. I went to told the minister, I said, let me tell you something. God told me how we're supposed to operate this. And yada, 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 I want to explain to him. And he said to me, he said, we're going to do exactly what God said. He said, tonight when I get the altar call, you have to stand right here. Let me show you. I was standing right on the aisle. And we was in the island. We didn't have chairs. They was out. And just poop was coming from everywhere with lemons and stuff. We was under this, in this park. And it was like it had been closed to the public for two years. But they allowed us to be there for crusade. Hundreds and hundreds of people. And they was preaching. And they was coming out of the aisle. And God had told me, he said, by the land on their hands, they'll receive the Holy Ghost. And look at me, I'm human, right? But coming down the aisle, I'm laying hands on them and checking them out to see if they're going to speak. God said, you don't have to check them out. I'm the one that's doing it. As I lay hands on folk, God would just study filling with the Holy Ghost. Twenty-some folk that one night filled with the Holy Ghost. And we, they wanted to baptize him, but we couldn't because they said, if we take him to the ocean, it was barracudas in the water. We couldn't do it. We had to baptize on a Saturday morning at 6 o'clock. A Church of God in Christ pastor was at the service. 
He said, I want to be the first one to go in the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. 6 a.m., we took him down. A church of God cross past mm -hmm. So what I am, I didn't decide to do this. Yeah, yeah. This is not my choice. I worked for United. After that, I had a good job. I thought I was doing super, made good money, traded cars every other year. <laughs> I said, give it up. But let me show you how bad it is. I drove down here because I wanted to try. Mm -hmm. I fly all the time. As a matter of fact, I got the call. I had a call last night when I got in. I looked at it. I got a call of the day. My itinerary for next weekend, I'd be in Michigan somewhere. Well, somewhere in Michigan. But she told me, I want to give you your itinerary. She left it on my voicemail. She said, you can call me back. But I have to call and get it. But let me show you now. When you surrender to God, and give him your all. Let me show you what he did. When I was working for the airline, I paid tax on my ticket. Listen to what God is doing. You know what I do now when I go to the airport? Show my ID. I don't even pay tax on the ticket. I don't have to pay tax. If God do it, and you walk by faith, he'll see you through it every time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's worth it all. Hey. Trust me. Hallelujah. It's worth it all. Thank you, Jesus. And people will receive the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. because you totally surrender to him. This is a good thing, you guys. You, it's a good thing. Hey. It's a God thing. Okay? Hallelujah. It's a God thing. Got many other testimonies I'm not going to go into because you will be sitting on the floor somewhere. Wow. You want to know, I want to be like it. I don't think so. <laughs> but it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you. Let me bring it on home. Holy Ghost is yours. Nobody have a question? Anybody else got a question? Let God use you. Don't be afraid. Fears of the devil are not of God. Yes. People come to the altar and say they want the Holy Ghost. Young lady said to me the other day. She said, I have a question. College kid. I was in New York last week. She said, I want the Holy Ghost, but I'm afraid. I said, fear is not of the Lord or the devil. Fear is not of the Lord, according to the scripture. So let's just trust God. Fear is not of the Lord. The devil trying to make you fearful because he knows you're going to be dynamite in God. So he trying to mess you up and have you fearful and not receiving Jesus. Oh, come on now. It won't take you but a second today to receive him. The Bible says the word, yes, the Holy Ghost, the word is not even in your mouth. Yes, That's how close the Holy Ghost is to you. And the thing of it is, don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure it out. Just believe it. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know how you went home last night and slept breathing all night long. But you was breathing. Yeah. And woke up this morning and you were still breathing. Yes. Right? Yes. You don't know how you did that, but you did. Yes. Don't, don't try to get in God's business to find out, oh, how am I going to speak in tongues? Just believe Him. Yes. You were so positive that you were going to get up today. You had your little clothes together. I'm going to wear that tomorrow. I'm going to wear this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you know how we do? Yes. Quit. I'm not done. I'm going to quit. Today, anybody need the tongue talking to Holy Ghost? Won't take you but a second. You know why it's gonna take you but a second? Because it thank you. Because it was a quick work on the day of Pentecost. And the Bible says he's the same what? Yesterday. Today, thank you. He is the same. Jesus has not changed. He hasn't changed. So today won't take you but a minute. The Bible said. The word, I'm, I'm quitting, I'm quitting, I'm quitting. It's six minutes after. You need about th ten minutes. Some folk need about five or ten minutes. But today you only need three. One minute to make up in your mind. That's right. And that was walk up front? Yeah. <laughs> and the third one to happen. Oh, you got it. She got it. She on this thing. She got this thing. Three minutes. One minute to make up your mind. Mm -hmm. The second minute to walk down the aisle. The third minute you will be speaking in tongues. Matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you really don't have to come to the altar. Mm. You can speak in tongues in your seat. Right, right. According to the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 44. Right. Why well, Peter was just speaking, they was filled with the Holy Ghost. He didn't even give an altar call. That's right. You sure Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. God is so dynamite. Yes, Lord. Yes, He is. All He wants us to do is trust Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Just trust Him. Come on down if you want the Holy Ghost. Get up and come. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. You want the Holy Ghost to get in tongues? Come right quick. Stand right here. Thank you. This is going to take a second. Yes. It's going to take a second. You could have been speaking in your seat. And you're so ready, you don't know what to do with yourself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the weight is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Just going to let it flow. Oh, go on and speak it out. There it is, man. Oh, look at you. He's so ready. Come on. Why don't you come on up here a minute? And since you're so into this, come on up here. Go on. You're going to speak it out. Look at him. Go on and speak the language. There you go. There you go. Go on and speak it out. Go on and say it. Go on and say it. Let it flow. Go on and say the word. You hear that language. Speak that language. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Go on and speak your language. The words is in your mouth. Hold on. Shout. Hey, shout. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. Talk, man. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yes. Talk. Oh, yeah. Yes. Talk to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, you better talk. Mama, she, oh, see. You better talk to your children.